Thank you for the debate. I recognize the member for Aldermont Norfolk. Noon and use my time for my maiden speech. As I worked on these remarks, I reflected on how I got here. I highly doubt any child, when asked what they would like to be when they grow up, answers with a politician. Well, I didn't either. For years, I answered the adult question with, I want to be a cowgirl. That didn't quite work out well. I didn't get off the ground. In fact, I never even got on the horse. I was shy growing up, but was known for doing things a bit unconventionally. At a young age, I discovered that despite being shy, I had opinions, and I enjoyed writing those opinions down. Some of them made, them the letter, like, made it to the letter to the editor section of our local newspaper, the Delhi News Record. Years later, I'd become a co-op student at that same paper, and just a few years after studying broadcast journalism, I'd return to the news record as a full-time reporter and eventually the editor. I'd also spin CDs on weekends at the Tilsonburg radio station, working the graveyard shift in Monterey Mass live from a local church on Sunday mornings. My parents taught my brother and me a strong work ethic. They worked hard, but my parents lived paycheck to paycheck. My big brother Michael is four years older than I am, and when he began working in the tobacco fields, I was as green with envy as the leaves he primed. So my parents approached the farmer and told them I wished to work as well. Butch, the farmer, took one look at the 11-year-old child I was and said, well, i give her a week. If she lasts the first week, she will last the harvest. I did, and I had more money in my bank account by the end of summer than any other 11-year-old I knew. By 16, I had saved enough money from harvests, working in retail, and babysitting to, to pay for my very first set of wheels, also the insurance and my gas, a feat I remain proud of still today. I owe a debt of gratitude to Butch and his wife Mary for taking a chance on me and further instilling in me a great work ethic. Harvests on the farm made me strong. My winters playing boys hockey made me resilient. I began playing when I was six and I would skate with the boys until my last year of midget juvenile when I was 18. For years, my hair was kept short. I wore Navy track suits to the arena and other teams knew me as Bob. I dreamed of being the next Wayne Gretzky. Today, it would be Haley Wickenheiser. To this day, I have so many bigger brothers who stood up for me when it wasn't cool to be a girl playing hockey in the 80s. I think at a young age, I learned there may be more politics in the arena than there is in this chamber. I thank my parents for supporting me in the arena at a time when it was not commonplace. Some also find it odd that our entire family drag raced. Yes, I had a need for speed at a very early age, and instead of taking it to the streets, my parents thought it was best that we go to the drag strip. All these experiences have served me well over the years. I still kick the puck around every Sunday, but my true passion for the game is watching my 17-year-old son, Carter, play. He's far more gifted than I could have ever dreamed to be, and my advice to any parent out there who thinks 6 a.m or 10 p.m. practices are an inconvenience, I'd say that I'm going to miss those days immensely in the very near future. My oldest, Addison, is 21. She's academically brilliant and will, in a few years, become one of Ontario's healthcare heroes. Addison spent this summer working at the Delhi Medical Centre, where she was a medical office assistant with the Seasonal Agricultural Worker Program. As you can tell, I am first and foremost a proud mom. Speaker, my kids and I know we are blessed to live in Haldeman, Norfolk. Both were able to attend a small rural school. When we go into town, we inevitably run into one of their former teachers, all of whom follow the successes of their past students. We are also very proud of our local heritage and our rich agricultural roots. We have a profound respect for those who take the best care to ensure the very best food makes it to our tables. Haldeman Norfolk has a warmth about it, not only the scenery of fresh plowed fields, Carolinian forests, lakes and grand rivers, but its people as well. Haldeman Norfolk boasts hard-working, principled people who count their blessings and believe in blessings in disguise. Haldeman Norfolk is also made up of many small towns that brim with pride and volunteers who ensure we have events every single weekend of the year. Speaker, I am a Conservative. My 23 years of service was not enough to earn me a nomination nod 
or the ability to run in a nomination race. That's okay. I am a Conservative, but I first believe in democracy. I believe there is no monopoly on a good idea. Thankfully, the majority of people in Haldeman Norfolk also believed this on June 2nd, and I will spend the next four years fighting for the very best for the good people of my riding. I want to take this opportunity to thank those who put their trust in me on June 2nd. I was told I'd never do it, that I'd better not do it, but my hockey background, my, art, my martial arts background, told me to endure, to persevere, and to always have integrity. The last time an independent came to Queen's Park without first running under a party banner was 1905. My riding of Haldeman Norfolk made history. On election night and in every subsequent interview I've done since election day, I've been very clear. The people of Haldeman Norfolk were courageous. They went to the ballot box and they checked the box that they were told never to check. Why? Because they too believe in democracy. They believe in making their own decisions and not having decisions made for them. They believed if they allowed a culture of disrespect, they would not be a victim once, but time and time again. I will represent the people of Haldeman Norfolk in this chamber in the most genuine way I can. Again, it took courage to vote for an independent candidate. I assure the people of Haldeman Norfolk, I will demonstrate that very same courage in this legislature and be the strong voice for them. When they tell me to support something from the government side, I will stand in this place and support the government. Likewise, if they tell me to, suppose some, to, per, to support something on this side of the House, I will stand here and I will do that as well. Similarly, if they, oppose, if they tell me to oppose something the government has brought forward, I will be their voice to hold this government to account. I was fortunate to also have an eager and talented campaign team that went against the grain to get an independent elected. I'd say they are the best campaign team Ontario has. And that gangly brother who forced me to stand in net during countless games of road hockey while he pelted a frozen tennis ball at me became so immersed in my campaign that on June 3rd, he was just a bit lost. My brother has always been my very best teammate. I have received emails and private messages from people right across Canada who told me the great people of Haldeman Norfolk serve as hope. My goodness, hope is what we need these days, love and hope. I am certain that courage will be contagious, and I certainly hope all members of this House will help set an example by being courageous, by speaking out against disrespect, by speaking up for what is right. I look forward to that. There have been movers and shakers who have had an impact on my political career over the past 23 years. Bob, Mad Dog Runciman, Lady Monroe, Julia, who showed me what a lady acts like here at Queen's Park. John Tory, who when he left the Pink Palace, left me a painting that hangs in my office at home. Brian Patterson has shown me kindness for over 20 years and has always shown up in that time of need. Today, there are new movers and shakers who will teach me new things. My seatmates have already done so, and I am hoping the member from Hamilton East, Stony Creek, will teach me how to throw a proper spiral on the front lawn someday. <laughs> Since arriving here at Queen's Park, I have been overwhelmed by the welcoming I have received from those who make sure the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed, to security, to those at the dining room and in the cafeteria, the front desk, the speaker. What a fantastic place we get to come to. It really does feel like a second home. And to all the other members of this House from all stripes who have made a point of coming over, shaking my hand, and offering support and encouragement, I say a hearty thank you. I look forward to working with you over the next four years. I will do my utmost to help you achieve the very best for your riding, and I ask that you help me do the same for Haldeman Norfolk. Despite Haldeman Norfolk being my favourite place, it does have its challenges. I've spoken to so many who are frustrated with Ontario's home care system. Nurses have told me they feel disrespected, and those on ODSP tell me government must stop dis disincentivizing work. My farmers are worried about input costs continually rising and tell me red tape is hampering their operations. Sometimes I feel that if government would do more listening, these problems would be fixed more easily. As legislators, I know we will not always have the answer. 
but it is incumbent on us to find those who do. And may I add, it's not always those who have deep pockets, who have the answers. I'd love to see politics done differently. I had a great mentor. Many of you know him as he spent 27 years in this legislature. Toby Barrett, the Duke, as many affectionately call him. Over my 23 years as his executive assistant, Toby demonstrated what a great MPP looks like. Toby arrived at Queen's Park under the Mike Harris Common Sense Revolution with MPPs like Steve Gilchrist, Bill Murdoch, Janet Ecker, Jim Flaherty, Ernie Hardiman, Tim Hudak, Julia Monroe, and yes, our own, very own Speaker of the House. That group brought in in 1995 may well be the last time a government did exactly what they campaigned on. Like it or not, they were true to their word. As for common sense, it'd be great if we could restore that for the good of the people of this province too. Anyway, I've digressed. A few things I learned quickly from Toby. There's no such thing as government money, and sometimes it's just best to keep your powder dry. Probably the greatest lesson came while I was being interviewed for the job in his office. I was asked many questions, but one stood out in particular. I was given a list of buzzwords like hardworking, punctual, diligent, and I was asked to choose which word was most important as an employee. Within that list was the word loyal. That's what I chose. It was the only correct answer. Because when you are loyal, all the other qualities and characteristics fall into place. I won't rehash how I came to run as an independent, because I think the media have done a fantastic job of detailing that. But I will admit, I got to the decision after countless hours of tears, of anger, frustration, and sadness. When I told Toby my plan, he did not waver. He may have called me crazy, but he said, all right, let's do this. Toby was up earlier, up later, and I think he knocked on more doors during my campaign than he had in his own. Toby was not given a proper retirement tribute, but I will continue to thank this fine gentleman every opportunity I have, a gentleman who understands the true meaning of loyalty. Winston Churchill once said, to each there comes in their lifetime, a special moment when they are figuratively tapped on the shoulder and offered the chance to do a very special thing, unique to them and fitted to their talents. What a tragedy if that moment finds them unprepared or unqualified for that which could have been their finest hour. Toby Barrett, I can assure you, is unique. He's always moved forward with careful thought and thoughtfulness. He's always taken the high road and, in my view, his entire career has been a smashing success. He's always been prepared, has always been a friend and a wonderful mentor. The constituents of Haldeman Norfolk and I wish the Duke a long and happy retirement. I would be remiss if I did not wish Toby's wife Carrie all the best as well, as she still, she will now have the Duke underfoot at home. She's a beautiful, strong woman, and all joking aside, I'm sure she's happy to have Toby home to watch television with, or just simply jump in the car and go for a drive. Speaker, I thank you for my time today. I know I am well positioned to represent the people of Haldeman Norfolk because I learned from the very best. Thank you.